All right, you've bought your GoPro Hero Max, you've shot your first video, now you want to get into the fun part, making an edit that people will actually want to watch. This is your GoPro Max Adobe Premiere 360 tutorial. Let's get into it. All right, so before you can actually get in and start editing your 360 footage, there's a few things that you're gonna wanna do and a few pieces of software you have to download to actually get that .360 footage into Premiere Pro. So, two pieces of software you're gonna need is the GoPro Player app, and then you're gonna need the GoPro FX Reframe plugin. So we're gonna go ahead and download those first to get those out of the way so you're ready to go follow along with the uh, rest of this tutorial. So for the GoPro Player app, this is the app that will actually read the .360 files. Now, it's pretty easy to find because it's in the App Store. So I'm gonna type in GoPro Player. You can also get this for Windows, um, however you do that. I've been on Mac forever, so this is how I'm gonna find it. So obviously, I already have GoPro Player downloaded, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open that. And it doesn't look like much at first because you actually need a clip to open it with. Now I've gone ahead and already created a file folder system so that I can find and organize my files for this project really easily. So I've called it Max Tutorial. You can call it whatever your project is. Now within, I have my own way of doing it. You may have yours, but this is kind of simple and easy. Lots of editors use it. You've got your exports folder. Then you've got your audio folder down below that. And within that folder, you have a sound effects and a music folder. This just keeps your audio files even more organized. Then below, you've got your max footage. I've got two more subfolders in there. One's called 360 footage, the other is your ProRes render. So the 360 footage is your .360 files that come straight out of your Hero Max. The ProRes renders are what will be coming out of the GoPro Player app. If this sounds confusing, we're gonna go through it. Then below there, you've got your project files. So this is where your Adobe Premiere Pro project files are gonna live. Again, just to keep it organized so that when you're editing in Premiere Pro, Premiere can actually find all of your files easier and it will stop slowing down your system by a little bit, not a lot. So once you've got all of these, you can find your footage that you need. So I've got my .360 file already in there and ready to go. So if I double click on this with the GoPro Player app installed, it should automatically open in the GoPro Player. There we go, we got it. So obviously if you're doing a super easy edit and you're just using one clip, maybe uploading to Instagram, you can do all of your editing in here. I'm not gonna go through that today though because we wanna know how to edit this in Premiere Pro. But obviously you can zoom in and out, you can move around, change the frame, you can add keyframes down the bottom here. Um, so it's great for super simple edits. So obviously to have a little more fun with this, we're gonna go ahead and export this as a equi rectangular file. And to do that, we're just gonna go to file, Export as, this is within the GoPro Player app. Export as 5.6K. Then a export settings box will show up here and it shows you how this will actually export if you don't change anything. So looks pretty good so far. So your resolution is 5.6K. Projection is equi rectangular, which is what you need for Adobe Premiere Pro to work with it. Then you've got your codec. That's the only thing I'm gonna change because I'm a bit of a resolution snob and I want to change that to ProRes HQ. On the other side for your options, you've got World Lock, uh, which minimizes rotation in your footage. So the camera is insanely smart and it kind of knows where the horizon is. Now World Lock confused me a little bit at first. I didn't quite understand how it worked, but after watching some POV footage, it makes a little more sense. This is with World Lock disabled. So essentially it looks like any other GoPro footage you might watch, any other POV footage specifically. So what it's actually doing is working as if it was just a GoPro with the added benefits of a 360 camera. So you can keyframe around and get different angles, but only if you manually override this frame. Now with world lock enabled, things are a little bit different. So this is now with world lock enabled and you can already see that framing is staying locked on the initial position and to actually follow Steve's 
front angle, you're gonna have to keyframe around quite a bit more. So this is where it's really important to decide what type of video you're making and decide whether you want world locked on or off. For the most part, I'm gonna be shooting a lot of POV footage like this, so I will probably leave it off myself, but there's tons of other uses for it uh, where you may want it enabled. So that's your rundown on world lock. Again, with the horizon level below that and then mount op optimization if you're on a tripod or something like that. Everything looks good here, so we're ready to send it to the queue, or if you click next, you just choose your output location and it'll export that one individual clip. Let's say you're doing a few different clips because you're creating a bit more of an in-depth edit with different angles and that. So we're gonna send it to the render queue. This is nice, it's basically an, a batch exporter. So all of your clips do still populate in individual windows, which is really annoying, but it's still at least once you set it, you don't have to go through and check every export as you go. So we're gonna name this studio. We're gonna change the location to our file folder system, ProRes render. I already have one in there, so I'm gonna call it Studio 2. We're gonna click Next. And now you can see I've got three other clips in here. Two have already finished, and this one's ready to go. So I'm just gonna make sure all of my settings are correct in the export settings. So right over here, you've got all of your export settings. All of it looks good, so I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna click Start. We're gonna let it export. And I guess while this is rendering, I have to talk about the 5.6K. There's some fine print in there, and that is that once we get into Adobe Premiere Pro and apply the GoPro Reframe plugin, you're gonna notice that if you're editing in a 4K timeline that it's not actually a 4K clip. What the GoPro Reframe plugin does is actually crops in on a portion of that footage because otherwise you have that full equirectangular stretched out image that has everything in one frame. Sounds a little confusing, but you'll see it in a second. And essentially what it has to do is crop in on that. So essentially that 5.6K turns into a 1080p file. So once that's actually exported, we're done in the GoPro player. Nothing else we have to do in there. So we can actually open up our Adobe Premiere Pro project, call it uh, Max Tutorial, real original there. And we're gonna locate where we want it to go and we're gonna drop it straight into Max Tutorial, Project Files, Choose. Now Adobe's pretty good at setting all the scratch disks, but I always like to double check that everything is going into the same location. So obviously we can see captured video, captured audio, video previews, the list goes on. It's all set to the same location as our project. So we're all good there, so we'll click OK. Now I like to change this so that my media bin is up in the top left corner and import media to start. So I'll double click on that. We're gonna to go to max tutorial, max footage, ProRes render. Make sure you're selecting your ProRes renders because the dot .360 footage is not recognized by Adobe Premiere Pro. So now I'm gonna click on my Studio 2 MOV. And there we go. So. If you wanna do this as a 4K sequence, you go down to red and then 4K HD 16 by nine. Click okay and now you've got your timeline set up and let's get ourselves into our edits. And we're gonna keep existing settings because we wanna keep this as a regular 4K timeline. So keep existing settings. And now we can see that all of the images in there. And that's not exactly what we want because obviously it looks really weird and we don't see everything we need. So this is where we're gonna go ahead and drop in the GoPro reframe plugin. And when we drop that in, it's cropped in. So this is a 4K timeline again and what it's done is it's shrunk that down to a 1080p file and all you have to do in the reframe is you're gonna to go to projection, GoPro 4K 16 by nine, and it upscales it back to a 4K image. So now this is where it's really cool. I'm not gonna to go too much into keyframing. There are plenty of great tutorials on how to keyframe, but this is essentially where you're gonna have the most fun with your edit. Here's a little secret though. 99% of careers that you watch online 
will upscale and crop into 1080 footage. So it's not that big a deal. In fact, I, I know someone that does it a lot. Is the new iPhone finally better than your DSLR? Pro photographer smashes his A9 and G good buys Google Pixel. <laughs> Kind of cool, I think. Tutorial. So you can see here, I've actually got a clip of myself snowboarding back in January. My skills are not what they used to be as I roll up the windows going off a 35 foot jump. It's pretty sad. But over on the left hand side in your effects panel, you can actually see you've got your pan and your tilt, rotate, lens curve, zoom, and then your advanced controls, which I won't even get into because I rarely use them myself. But when you go next door to the keyframes, you can see I've already set a whole bunch of keyframes for this clip just to rotate around and make this clip a little more fun. So let's watch that back and see some of the things that you can actually do within Adobe Premiere Pro that's a little easier to not only work with, but also to see what you're working with in the control panel here. So let's play it back with those keyframes so you can actually see what is going on. So you can see my first set of keyframes rotates around then zooms back in. We see the, the jump coming up. Now we want to see my reaction as I'm probably terrified. Get right out there to see me rolling up the windows. So those are just some of the effects that you can apply with a 360 camera and it's a ton of fun. But once you've got your edit and you're happy with it, this is where you make sure that your GoPro 360 footage and actually footage in general when you're exporting from Premiere Pro looks as crisp as possible because you see a lot of GoPro POV footage, 360 footage in general, where you get really pixelated blocky images, and that's because your bitrate settings are too low. So we're gonna go and we're gonna apply one more countermeasure effect uh, in your export settings. So I'm gonna click on Command M to go to my export window, and this is assuming you're happy with your edit. Change your output name to export, exported um, and then we're going to look for our file folders here we're going to go to our exports and save it so now we've got our file name saved here then we can change our preset to youtube 4k ultra hd make sure our width and our height are correct then below we'll go to max render at maximum depth from there, we'll go to bitrate settings. This is crucially important. I can't stress it enough. You have to make sure that your bitrate settings are high enough. So for 4K, we're gonna go to constant bitrate and it starts you off at 40. I like to push up a little bit higher between that 50 and 70 range. So we'll go to 60. Then we'll go to use maxim, maximum render quality. And then just double check that you're exporting the video and the audio. And for myself, I'm just exporting this little clip in the whole video. If you wanna export the entire timeline, make sure that you don't have your in and out settings set to a small portion like I do down here. Make sure your in and out is stretched across the entire timeline. Otherwise, you're gonna export a small clip. And if you're doing 4K, you're wasting a few minutes of your time exporting that small bit. So just do these double, double checks along the way. Make sure that you're good to go. And uh, then you're ready to export. So once this has gone through and exported, obviously watch back all of your footage, make sure it's good to go. And then if it is, you're able to upload to YouTube, Vimeo, uh, wherever else you wanna share it on whatever file size and social media platform. So that's essentially it. That is my post-production workflow on editing GoPro Max footage. And I uh, hope this was helpful to you. If you wanna get more in depth with editing GoPro 360 footage or 360 footage in general, uh, Christoph has got a ton of awesome videos on editing 360 videos. So definitely check out his channel and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Roll
those windows, boys. <laughs> First time I've done any jumps in five years. It felt great, though. Oh, yeah, that feels good. I landed a little deep. Did you? Yeah, you went big. I, I landed deep. I need your footage, by the way. <laughs>